بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We have hadith number 310 in the series of Umdat al-Ahkam and this hadith was narrated by Abu Huraira be Allah be pleased with him and it's dealing with the chapter of marriage. So who will read this? Okay. Narrated Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A woman who has been married before should not be given in marriage except after consulting her. And a virgin should not be given in a marriage except after taking her permission. O Allah's Prophet, how can we know her permission? He has said her silence indicates the her permission. Very good. Now, in this hadith, we learn that in Islam, a girl, a woman, to her guardian has two cases. Either she was married before and now she's not. Either because she's divorced or she is widowed. Or either this woman was not married before this is referred to her as a virgin so a virgin is any woman that was not married before and the marriage was not consummated maybe she had a marriage contract but the marriage did not materialize it's only on paper and then she was divorced or widowed in this case she remains to be considered or labeled as a virgin and this Classification is important in Islam because we know, for example, in the case of prescribed punishment, if a woman commits an act of fornication or adultery, is the punishment the same? No. If she was never married before in her life, she is to be flogged 100 lashes. But if she was previously married, whether divorced, widowed, or presently still married and she commits an act of adultery, she has to be stoned to death. The boy or the man is the same. If he was never married, flogged. If he is married or was previously married, then he has to be stoned to death. In marriage, the Prophet وسلم, separating and making a distinction between previously married and a virgin. When a proposal comes, the father goes to his previously married daughter. And he says that so-and-so proposed to you. And what do you think? If she does not reply, this is not an approval. The Prophet ﷺ, she has to be consulted. She has to speak out. So she has to say, yes, I accept. Unlike a virgin who is usually bashful and shy, usually I'm saying, nowadays girls are not like this. So if the father goes to the girl and says, my daughter so-and-so proposed to you, what do you think? If she looks down and she does not reply, this is a sign of her approval as the Prophet says, Asram. because if she didn't want him, she would object. This is the norm. Nowadays, girls are a little bit yani, not so bashful and shy. She would say, what car does he drive? Does he have money? Is he handsome? Is he tall? Is he... So even girls who are supposed to be virgin, they are not as bashful. But this is not the norm. Normally, girls are shy when it comes to such topics. They would not discuss it. Their shyness is a sign of their approval. A previously married woman? No, she has to speak out. Now, having said that, when a father or a guardian goes and conveys a proposal, he has to sell his case. Not by saying, a man came to you and he proposed to marry you. What do you say? This is not enough. He has to sell this boy to the girl and show the good merits and good character and the good things in him so he has to say 
Oh, mashallah, he is five or six or seven years older than you. He is nicely built. His face is quite handsome. He has a good job. He comes from a very good family. Or he is quite well off. He has his own house. He is very polite. I've asked around and they say that he is, mashallah, any of the things that would make him appeal to her so that she would approve. Of course, this is only preliminary measures because then there is what we call the interview or the meeting, the Islamic meeting. When the boy comes and sits with her in my presence, the guardian's presence, and they talk to each other and try to know one another and to try to get something of mutual liking between them. And then it might materialize and happen. We move on to the following hadith. And this hadith was narrated by Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She said that the wife of Rafa'a al-Quradi, may Allah be pleased with him, came to the Prophet wasalam, And this woman said, I was with Rifa'a and he divorced me thrice. Irrevocable. Afterwards, I married Abdurrahman ibn Zubair. And all he possesses is like the fringe of a garment. Thereupon, the Prophet wasalam, smiled and said, do you want to return to Rifa'a? No, until he tasted your sweetness and you have tasted his sweetness. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, was sitting at the time with the Prophet of Allah والسلام, and Khalid ibn Sa'id, may Allah be pleased with him, was sitting at the door awaiting permission to enter, yet he heard the conversation. And Khalid called loudly saying, Abu Bakr, don't you hear what she is saying loudly in the presence of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Now this hadith deals with a number of topics. Firstly, this woman was married to the companion Rafa'a or Rifa'a Al-Quradi. And he divorced her three times. So we learn from this hadith that divorce is irrevocable if it takes place the third time. Allah says divorce is twice. Either you keep them or you let them go. And the third divorce is the one that makes the marriage irrevocable. Khalas, it's done. What does that mean? A man has the right to divorce his wife three times. Of course, for legitimate reasons. The first divorce takes place after the divorce takes place, they have what is known as the idda, the waiting period. And this varies. If she's pregnant, her idda is over when she delivers. If she is not pregnant, her idda is counted by monthly periods. After the three monthly periods, she is a stranger to him. And during the three monthly periods, he has the right to reconcile her and get her back to be his wife. But this means that one divorce is down, two to go. And if he doesn't, khalas. If the three monthly periods are over, then she's a stranger to him. He cannot go back to her until he proposes again from the very beginning. Then he pays a new mahar, a new dowry with the consent of her father, etc. This is the only way acceptable. So the first divorce, he reconciled. They're back together. Then something happened, he divorced her again and they reconcile. The third divorce, if he says, you are divorced, immediately she becomes a stranger. And this is, they called irrevocable divorce, the third and last final divorce. If this happens, as mentioned in the Quran, he cannot marry her again, not even with a new mahar, with the consent of her father, khalas, it's over. She's haram for him forever until, until what? Until she marries another man a correct marriage, not for the intention of making the first one halal. No, a correct marriage and the marriage is consummated. If he divorces her after that, she may marry the first husband. So this woman comes and she says, my husband Rifa'a, he divorced me three times, irrevocable. Then I married Abdurrahman ibn Zubair. 
I married another companion, and this is what is meant by he has, the hadith says that all he possesses is like the fringe of a garment. She's saying something figuratively, a metaphor, not a clear statement, because there has to be some sort of bashfulness or shyness. She's saying that Abdul Rahman ibn Zubair is impotent. He's unable to perform sexual intercourse. He's not capable of doing this. So she is saying that she wants to go back to her first husband because her second husband is impotent. So the Prophet smiled, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he understood from her question that relating his impotency, she wants to go to the first husband who was not impotent. He was capable. So the Prophet said, you want to go to the first one? No. Until the marriage is consummated, until sexual intercourse takes place between you and the second husband. This is a condition. Otherwise, you cannot. So you may divorce the second husband, but you cannot go to the first one. You may marry a third one who would have sexual intercourse and then afterwards divorce you properly with no intention of a trick or so, then in this case, you may go back to the first husband. Now, this is the rule in Islam. If three divorces take place, she cannot go back to him until she marries a correct marriage and a marriage that there is no intention of any kinds of trick in it. We have a short break. Stay tuned and inshallah, we'll be right back. Or divorce. What's Islamic ruling? Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Peace TV presents over 100 million viewers at one of the largest peace conferences in the world addressing a sea of spellbound spectators over 30 world-renowned orators on Islam with credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. To one and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way. It's the simple way. Remind each other. The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people for good. This is the call of Islam. With the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, manual the, glorious Quran. the glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in peacemakers, Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. So, the Prophet ﷺ told her that she cannot go back to the first husband until a second marriage is correctly consummated. And why do we say correctly? Because 
It so happens that people divorce and then they regret, especially if there are children around. So after 20 years of marriage, they have children and the man divorced her within the 20 years, three times, proper divorces. What to do? In this case, they make a trick. So they either hire someone to have a marriage contract for a day, for a week, for whatever, and then he divorces her, and then the first husband could marry her again. The Prophet said, والسلام, that the second husband is like a borrowed goat. Sometimes if you have goats that are females and you would like them to reproduce, you have to have a male goat. So if you don't have a male goat, you go and borrow some male goats from your neighbors. So the Prophet is describing the second husband as a borrowed goat. And such marriage is haram. It's forbidden if it's with this intention. So if the man, the first husband, asks his friend, please marry my ex-wife for a week or two so that I can marry her after you divorce, this marriage is invalid and she's not permitted for the first one. If the woman marries another man, separate proposal, a man proposes and she says, yes, I'll take you as a husband. And she intends in a week time, she will divorce him so that she can go back to her first husband. This is not permissible and she cannot. And the issue or the last scenario would be, what about if the husband and the wife who were divorced irrevocably don't have the intention, but a third party, a third person marries the woman with the intention that he would divorce her after a while so that they can get married together. The two parties are not involved. Is this permissible for the man? The scholars say it is not, again, permissible because the intention, the ill intention to make what is haram, halal, is there. Only if she marries a true and correct marriage without any intention of going back to the first one, and then she's divorced without any intention, only then it becomes permissible for her. And the Prophet said, Asam, that until you taste his sweetness and he tastes your sweetness. Again, this is another metaphor to describe intercourse. So it is not said in a way that would be shameful or would affect people's feelings. This is how the Arabs talk, subhanAllah, in a very beautiful fashion and polite manner. Yet, Khalid ibn Sa'id, may Allah be pleased with him, who was outside and heard the conversation, was outraged. He thought that this is not acceptable to be said in the presence of the Prophet ﷺ. So he's shouting at Abu Bakr, who's there. Abu Bakr, don't you hear what this woman is saying loudly? Meaning that he wants the woman to hear and he wants her to be shy and not to disclose such issues in front of the Prophet ﷺ. But this is not the case. People say there is no shyness in Islam or there is no bashfulness in Islam before they want to ask something that is a little bit sensitive or impolite. This statement is untrue. Bashfulness and shyness is always in Islam. Yet we say that Allah Azza wa Jal is not shy of the truth. So when you want to ask something that is a little bit personal or something that may be considered to be of a sensitive issue, you do not say that there is no haya in Islam, there is no bashfulness in Islam. You say Allah is not shy of the truth. And then you pose your question. So if such a sister or such a brother who happen to have some questions and queries about Islam and they're prevented from asking, who would they ask? They should ask whatever goes through their minds, but they should do that in a polite and acceptable fashion. We open the floor for the questions, if you have any. MashaAllah, now we're raising questions. The first brother to raise his hands. Can uh, divorce be conveyed through SMS, email? Okay, that's a very good question. Though it is not that related, but is divorce possible through SMS or emails? Nowadays, unfortunately, people do not communicate together. So when lunch is served in the house, 
the mother sends a message through BlackBerry to her son, come down for food. They don't communicate, they don't speak to each other, unfortunately. So what's the ruling on such a divorce? First of all, divorce is divided into two types. Clear divorce and metaphorical divorce or ambiguous divorce. Clear divorce as I divorce you. You are talaq. What's between you and me in marriage is void. This is considered to be clear. There's no ambiguity in it. One does not say to his wife, I divorce you. And five minutes later he says, no, no, I meant that I divorce you. That means I will not stay with you in the same room. I will go to the other room. This is clear. And that is why Alayhi said three, that when said seriously or said jokingly, take place. And he mentioned Alayhi salam, divorce, marriage, and reconciliation. The other type of divorce is the divorce that is ambiguous. When a man says to his wife, go to your family, go to your family. In times of anger, we look at his intention. When someone says, I don't want to ever see your face again, we look at his intention. This is something ambiguous. It can be and it cannot. If someone writes in a paper, I divorce my wife Fatima. And my wife now is going to go crazy. <gasps> Sheikh divorced me. I don't have a wife called Fatima. Ha ha ha. Oh, he may have a wife, a third wife. Oh, I'm going to kill him. Oh, may Allah make it easy on all of us. So if someone writes on the paper, I divorced my wife Fatima and his wife's name is Fatima. Does this take place? This is ambiguous to some scholars. Why? Because he may say, I was only trying to check the pen. I see my handwriting, how it looks. I didn't intend divorce. So SMSs, emails, again, this goes back to the court. Maybe he was typing. Maybe he was playing with his friend. He could have any other reason. This is between him and Allah Azza wa Jal. So if someone divorces ambiguously by saying to his wife, go to your father's house. I don't want to see you anymore. She goes to her father's house and her father comes and says, did you divorce? He said, no, no, uncle. By Allah, I didn't. I didn't mean anything. I just wanted her to go for a week or two so things would cool down. Then this is not a divorce. But if he says, yes, I intended that this was a divorce, then the divorce takes place. So I hope this answers the question. Yes.